So in today's video, we are going to be discussing all things Mansfield Town and why they are currently my League 2 promotion favourites. If you do go on to enjoy today's video, please make sure to drop a like on there for me. If you could try and hit 100 likes on today's video, that would be massively appreciated. Subscribe if you are new as well. We are on the road to 8,000 subscribers, so please make sure you are subscribed if you haven't already with that post notification bell on. It's free to do so and it does massively help out. Drop a comment in as well down in the comment section down below. Let me know where do you think Mansfield will finish at the end of this upcoming. 23-24 campaign. Now last season I backed Mansfield to the league with injury problems and some interesting recruitment signing a lot of old players basically. It didn't really work out in the end. I think they missed out on the playoffs by one goal. Not even goal difference, just they needed to score one more goal I think and they would have made it in. So absolutely crazy stuff and I think this year they'll go one better. Their recruitment so far has been very good. I think they're maybe one or two signings away from really competing for that title but as of right now I've got them in my top three. We've already done a video for Stockport County and Notts County and in today's video we discuss in all things Mansfield Town, so make sure to drop a like on there for me, subscribe if you are new as well, and let's get into it. Starting out then with last season's final day heartbreak for Mansfield Town, they finished 8th in the table, after 46 matches they accumulated 21 wins, 12 draws and 13 defeats, scoring 72 goals, conceding 55, that left them on a positive 17 goal difference and 75 points, the last 5 matches ended in a win, a loss, a loss, a win and a win, 7th place Salford who've made it into the playoffs, they they also accumulated 75 points. They scored 72 goals as well, but they only conceded at 54. So them sloppy goals Mansfield let in at times, that really did come back to bite them in the end. But they scored the joint most amount of goals in the league, but defensively was where they really struggled last season. And their recruitment so far, I mean... A large majority of them have been defenders. I think four out of their six signings have been defenders, one being a goalkeeper as well. It's clearly a position on the field where Nigel Clough and the recruitment staff have decided they need to improve. And the stats back that up, to be honest with you, and I think they've certainly done that. Some of their signings, I mean, even Alfie Kilgore last January, I think that was an absolutely exceptional signing. Obviously, he scored that last minute equaliser against my team, Bradford City, at Valley Parade back in, I think it was February. So that was absolutely heartbreaking. But he was brilliant for them in the second half of last season. If we have a look then at how Man Mansfield's squad is currently shaping up ahead of the 23-24 campaign. Now, the graphic is in a 4-2-3-1. I've put them in their natural position, and then the position in brackets is the potential position they might play under Nigel Clough in his current system. Now, we don't know what, specifically what formation Clough might play. It looks like it's going to be a diamond, potentially 4-3-3. They seem to have sacked off that 3-5-2, but clearly, they've got a lot of competition at four places. Obviously, Elliot Hewitt's going to be out until next year with the ACL injury. That's a big loss for them. He's been brilliant for them over the last couple of seasons. Potentially, they could do with another centre-half. Say Bailey Cargill gets injured, then they don't really have someone to play on that left side, but some of their signings so far have been really, really good. They have brought back Christy Pym on a, I think it was an undisclosed fee from Peterborough United. He signed a two-year contract with a football club. I'm personally not Christy Pym's biggest fan. I don't think he was good as Nathan Bishop was a couple seasons ago for the Stags, but he's still a relatively solid goalkeeper at this level. I think Scott Flinders has done well to push him very far, to be honest with you, but it's clear that Nigel Clough sees Christy Pym as the number one. I think for a transfer fee paid, they probably could have got someone better on loan or on a free transfer, but they decided to go back with Christy Pym, continuing his momentum with the defence that he's already built from last season. I don't think he's a bad option whatsoever. They've also brought back Will Swan as well. We'll start with the two players who they brought back from last season. He was on loan from Nottingham Forest and he's now made that permanent, I think, a three-year deal with the option of a further year. If you watch the channel before, you'll know how highly I rate Will Swan. He's an absolutely fantastic footballer. 22 years of age. Last season scored 10 goals in 12 starts, averaging a goal every 136 minutes. Absolutely exceptional footballer. 20% goal conversion rate. And that's also with missing a 11 big chances. A really, really good player in my opinion. I'm a big fan of him and if they, I don't think he's going to be fit for the first couple of games of the season but when he's fit and firing he is their main striker in my opinion. I think that's a brilliant piece of business to get him back on a permanent transfer. They've also brought in George Williams on a one-year deal after he was released by MK Dons. Can play right back but might play right centre-back under Nigel Clough. One-year deal for a 30-year-old I think it just makes sense. They need a bit of cover in that position while Elliot Hewitt is recovering from that ACL injury and he's a pretty versatile as well. Last season made 20 a appearances in League One. His stats aren't great to be honest with you. Only kept at four clean, seat, uh, clean sheets, sorry. Averaging 0.5 interceptions per game, 0.7 tackles per game, but 2.5 clearances per game is not too bad. He averaged 1.7 aerial duels per 90, winning 61% of them, and 1.5 ground duels per 90, and winning at 54% of them. So he's very good defensively. Going forward, not the great. It's just a 21% accurate crossing, and just 30% of his long balls are accurate as well. No goals and no assists, so he's not going to provide much going forward, but defensively, 
it. I thought he was pretty solid, so I think that is a pretty smart sign. He's not going to be their first choice. Callum Johnson will probably be their first choice right back or right wing back this season, but I don't think he's a bad option for a little bit of colour. Uh, colour? Cover, sorry. Bailey Cargill is a signing who excites me quite a lot. I think this one is an absolutely exceptional signing, in my opinion. He's come in on a free transfer. I think I think he was released by Forest Green Rovers. Left-footed centre-back, 27 years of age, played uh, 22 times for Forest Green last season in League One. Scored one goal as well. He kept two clean sheets, averaging one interception per game, 1.3 tackles per game, and 2.9 clearances per game as well. He averaged two ground duels per 90, winning 62% of them, and 2.5 aerial duels per 90, winning 67% of them. Like I mentioned earlier, Mansfield really did need to improve their defence this season. I think they've more than done that with the signing of Bailey Cargill. If they can keep Cargill and Kilgore fit for the full season, them two have got to be one of the best centre-back pairings in the league, in my opinion. I think they're both absolutely incredible, especially Bailey Cargill. Gives you that balance as well, being left-footed, and I think that's an absolutely exceptional signing, in my opinion. Aaron Lewis has come in on a two-year deal from Newport County on a free transfer. Now, according to Transfer Marks, he's a left-back, but I was speaking to a couple Mansfield fans, and they seem to think he's going to play either right-back or centre-mid. Sofa score has him down as a left-mid, so whatever position he is, he's a very good player. Last season for Newport, in 32 starts, he scored one goal and got seven assists as well, creating five big chances, averaging 1.4 key passes per game, so really good creative numbers. Defensively pretty solid as well, 1.2 interceptions per game, 2.1 tackles per game, and 0.9 at clearances per game as well. He averaged 0.5 dribbles per 90, 51% of them being successful, I think he's really good. 3.4 ground duels per 90, winning 56% of them, and 1.1 aerial duels per 90, winning 45% of them. I think this one, again, is an absolutely brilliant signing, and I'm really jealous Bradford didn't get him because he would have been perfect to play as left wing back for us, but he seems like Moy's going to play maybe right back or potentially as another central midfield option, but again, a really smart signing. And their final signing then is Callum McDonald. He's come in on a one-year contract, I believe, according to Sofa Score. It might be two years. I'm not really too sure. Stags fans, if that's wrong, let me know down in the comment section down below. Recently been playing at teams like Bristol Rovers. I think he had a spell at Tranmere as well, I want to say. Left back, they needed cover for Stephen McLaughlin. He's going to be out for a significant period of time as well, again, with injury, and he's very unreliable with these injuries. So, again, they needed some cover in defence, and while he's not the best left back in the league, he's a solid enough option at 25 years of age on a one-year deal. I think it's a really smart pick-up, to be honest with you. Last season in League One, didn't do too bad for Bristol Rovers. Over. So again, I think this one is a pretty smart signing. Their signings so far have been pretty good. I still think they could do with maybe another centre-back option and potentially another wide player. I know they don't naturally play with wingers, but if they want to go to that 4-3-3, they've got players who can play on the wing, like Lucas Aikens. Keeler Dunn probably could do a job there, but I think they need a natural winger. I think their squad will be very complete, in my opinion. Let's now get into my five key players for Mansfield for this upcoming campaign. In at number five, then, I have gone with Bailey Cargill. I think he'll be really important for the Stags this season season. He's going to be one of the few players in that squad who I think is really irreplaceable. If they don't get another left-footed centre-back in, I think he is going to be very important for them. Yes, they've got other centre-back options like John Joe O'Toole, but he's going to be out again for a couple of months as well with injury, so they need to keep Cargill fit. If they do, I think he'll comfortably be one of the top three, top five centre-backs in the whole league. I really do rate him that highly, and in my opinion, I think he's going to be their fifth most important player for this upcoming campaign. In at number four, I have Hiram Boateng. Now, potentially didn't live up to the expectations that they had of him last season when they brought him in on a three-year contract, I believe, from MK Dons. But I really rate Boateng very highly. I think he's fantastic. Again, I always like a left-footed player. Gives you that balance on that left side if that's where he's going to play in the diamond. He's going to provide some competition with Stephen Quinn, but I think if you get Boateng on form and you keep him fit, I think he's going to be one of the best midfielders in the league, in my opinion. I really do rate him that highly. I think he's absolutely exceptional. And I think, like what I say, if they can keep him fit, he'll be absolutely brilliant for Mansfield at this season. In at number three, I've gone with Alfie Kilgore. Like what I mentioned earlier, yeah brought him in in January and ever since then their defence got improved slightly but now he's got a really good partner in Cargill. I think them two are going to be brilliant for them this season. Kilgore for me is an absolutely exceptional defender at this level. I think he probably could have done a job in League One for Bristol Rovers to be honest with you. Didn't really get the opportunity and I think now that Mansfield have brought him in he's going to be very key for them this season. In at number two I've gone with Davis Keeler Dunn. Again a man who they brought in in January I believe from Burton Albion. I think they paid a bit of money for him as well so hopefully he'll be hoping to get into that double figures for both goals and assists. He does score more goals rather than create chances but a goal scoring attacking midfielder to play off them two front men. If he has to play up front with someone like a Bowery or an Aikens I think he could more than do a job with that with maybe Stephen Quinn behind but I can certainly see Davies Keeler done nailing down a position in that team to be as that attacking midfielder and I think he's going to be their second most important player in this upcoming campaign and in at number one I rant and rave about him all the time Will Swan. If he keep this man fit I think he genuinely challenges for the golden boot this 
this season. I think he's going to be someone who does go under the radar. People are going to be talking about Andy Cook, Paul Mullin, Macaulay Langstaff, David McGoldrick, etc. But Will Swan, for me, his goals to game ratio proves that. Averaging a goal every 136 minutes, 10 goals in 12 starts, keeping fit. I think he's on for 20, 25 goals next season easily. I really, really do rate Will Swan. And fingers crossed for Mansfield's sake, they keep him fit and firing. I mean, Reese Oates not even on here. Lucas Aikens, Mr. Versatile, not even on here. Stephen Quinn, not on my list. They've got a massively talented squad, the Mansfield. And it's just about getting them to click and keeping them all fit. And I certainly think Mansfield will be finishing in the top three, in my opinion. Now let's get in to some potential starting 11s. Now, as I mentioned at the start of the video, it seems like Mansfield are going away from the 3-5-2 this season. But if at any point they do decide to go back to it, here is how they could potentially line up for that. I've got Christy Pym in goal, a back three of George Williams, Alfie Kilgore and Bailey Cargill. You could probably have Elliot Hewitt as that right centre-back, but because he's going to be out for a number of months and then he's got to get to, got to get up to speed and there's no guarantee that he's going to perform as well as what he did pre-injury. I've not got him in my side as of right now. As your two wing-backs, I've got Callum Johnson and Aaron Lewis. They don't naturally have a natural left wing-back at the club, but I think Aaron Lewis would probably be the best fit for that. Played left mid for Newport County, so it makes sense to put him in there. Ollie Clark and Hiram Boateng in that midfield. I think them two complement each other very well and putting Boateng over Quinn is maybe a big shock to maybe some Mansfield fans but I really do rate Boateng very highly. Davies Keeler done in the 10 and Swan and Aikens up front again I think them two complement each other very well and you have a look at the bench there you've got every position covered. Oates and Bowery they could easily replace Swan and Aikens. Quinn could fill in for Keeler Dunn or Boateng. Reed could easily come into that midfield. Hewitt plays anywhere across that back five. Aaron Lewis as well very versatile can play either wing back or central midfield so I think that one would work very nicely. So I'm just editing the video back and I've realised I put Aaron Lewis starting at left wing back and also as my second substitute. You can delete your comments now, apologies about that. Or I think what is more likely to happen is that Mansfield do play with a four diamond two this season and here is how they could potentially line up in that formation. Christy Pym in goal once more with Callum Johnson at right back. Callum McDonald getting the nod at left back again. Stephen McLaughlin very injury prone. I can't see Aaron Lewis playing as a left back as a full back. I can maybe see him more as a wing back. So McDonald makes the most sense. Kilgore and Cargill in the middle once more because them two are just absolutely unreal. Louis Reed at the base of that midfield. You could potentially go with Anthony Hartigan but I think Louis Reed is a very talented footballer so he is in the holding midfield role in my opinion. Oli Clark and Hiram Boateng as your box-to-box -box midfielders again. Oli Clark a bit more conservative, breaking forward with them late runs, but Boateng getting on the ball, creating chances for Aikens and Swan up front, and obviously Keeler Dunn in that 10 role again. On the bench, it's very similar. I think it is. Is it the exact same? I'm pretty sure that is actually the exact same bench, so not too bad to be honest with you. Some really talented players don't even make it into my squad to be honest with you, and there is some real quality, real competition for place at Mansfield town but there you have it there are my reasons why Mansfield Town are currently my automatic promotion favourites and if you disagree let me know down in the comment section down below I am going to leave it there though for today's video if you have enjoyed please make sure to drop a like on their form if you could try and hit 100 likes as I said at the start of today's video that would be massively appreciated subscribe if you are new as well we are on the road to 8,000 subscribers so please make sure you are subscribed if you haven't already with that post notification bell on it's free to do so and it does massively help out drop a comment in as well down in the comment section down below let me know where do you think Mansfield will finish ahead of this 23-24 campaign now I've seen a lot of people predicting Mansfield to be around the playoffs maybe not even making it into the playoffs I really rate Mansfield as a team I think this will be the final of the season they get back into League One and I'm sticking my neck on the line Mansfield Town will be automatically automatically promoted back into League One this season thank you very much for watching today's video have a great rest of your day and I'll see you very soon for another one peace